come with me to uh, the book of John, it's Gospel, the fifth chapter, and we're also going to jump over to an Old Testament um, scripture in Nehemiah that puts these two together. John 5, and I'm going to just read verse 1, 2, and 3, but of course the context goes on, but I want to point out something in there that was interesting to me this time around. John 5, 1, 2, and 3. I'm reading from the New King James. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there was at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In this lie a great multitude of impotent folk, the blind, the halt, the withered, waiting for the moving of the waters. And all the people said, Amen. Now this is King James, New King James. It, it calls this place the, um, uh, the um, it calls this place the sheep market, sheep market. But in the Amplified and in, in, in NIV, it calls it the sheep gate, the sheep gate. The sheep market would propose something else for King James was alluding to the sheep gate, but he called it the sheep market. It would be in the book of Nehemiah, in the third chapter in verse one, then Elishab, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priests, and built the sheep gate. I'm reading this in the New King James in Nehemiah 3 and 1. They built the sheep gate. They, cons they consecrated it and hung its doors. They built as far as the Tower of Hundred and consecrated it. Then as far as the Tower of Hanel, period. But I want you to see the sheep gate, the sheep gate the sheep gate. The subject this morning is, is, I'm ready for another move of God. I'm ready for another move of God. My other subject was going to be revival at the sheep gate, but however, get in to the revival, a move of God, or revival at the sheep gate. Bear with me as we do a little Sunday school. Thank you, Elder Greg. Ready for the move of God or ready for a move of revival, it happens at the sheep gate. God is moving, and the favor of God is moving on your behalf. If you track in Nehemiah, that third chapter, flip back one page or go down in your device, you pick up the second chapter of Nehemiah. And here is a story that opens up that explains the journey of God's people back to Jerusalem, coming out of Captivity. Nehemiah, them are coming back up, back to Jerusalem, back to Bethlehem, Judah. Judah means praise, beginning to build back up the house of God. In that chapter, the second chapter of Nehemiah, as soon as it was heard, our news had got out that Nehemiah and his companions were going back to Jerusalem. And you see here, Sambalat and Tobiah creeps up. They come into the pitch, in the picture, and I'll explain them in just in a moment. The sudden news about this, the sadness came on, on Nehemiah when he was the cupbearer to the king. He goes in before the king, he's very sad. As a cupbearer, you, you cannot have a sad countenance. You have to make sure your spirit is, is always up. Let me put it where you're at. You don't want too many people with kryptonite around you. You want people to have energy around you. It's, 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 it's vampires, it's leeching, it's, it's sucking when people get around you. With no, they don't have to say anything, just walk in your presence. And you can feel out, oh, this, this, and I'm not going into energy. I'm going into humans. Certain people just don't want around you. If they even call, you can hear it through the phone. <sighs> Listen, you call me back, because right now, you're not pulling me through this phone and pulling me down. Here is Nehemiah the cupbearer, and he's going before the king. The king is asking him about his countenance. In Nehemiah second chapter, why are you so sad? The king explores his sad sadness is because Jerusalem is laying in waste or in ruins. Nehemiah asks for him, the king, to give him material to go back and restore and rebuild Jerusalem. He needs the material because everything had been burnt up in the fire, as prophesied or spoken by God that is going to be destroyed. You must understand also that Nehemiah had a burden for the things of God, and his burden led him to not be happy about the house of God laying in ruins. I could come from my own home and see all the decadence in our houses or in our apartments wherever we live, 
But you came to the house of God and it was in ruins. Something should burden your heart to say, we need to do something about the house of God. In this Nehemiah, the second chapter, around verse 12 through 18, then I said to them, he's speaking now to the people, you see the distress that we are in. Now in Jerusalem lie waste, you see it, and the gates are burnt with fire, Nehemiah 2, 17 and 18. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. Let's get our hands dirty. Let's get into the building process. All hands on deck. If the burden is on Nehemiah now, he wants, he, Clinton wants, to, I mean, Nehemiah, Cl Clinton, ne he wants to share the burden with everyone else. So come on. He says, I, I told them, Nehemiah said, of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me, and also the king's word that he had spoken to me. God put the burden on me. His hand is on me to do this work. And I spoke to the king, and the king also supported me. He tells them then, so they said, the people said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. The people got excited. They wanted to build. And they put their hands to the work. Amen? Amen. In verse 20, 19 and 20 of Nehemiah 2, he says, you see clearly anything, I'm going to lead into the scripture. You see, clearly here, anytime you get ready to do something in building or doing something for God or doing something for your personal life, then here it comes in verse 19, Sambalat and Tobiah shows up. You're always going to have a Sambalat and Tobiah. These are negative people that will come up with negative energy and come up with negative talk won't help you do anything positive, but to have to talk about everything negative, and you'll be sitting there saying, I'm not gonna do nothing. Why would you let somebody stop you doing your work and they're not gonna do it for you? They showed up, they heard about it. They heard about what Nehemiah and the people were attending to do, and began to laugh at them. And the Bible says they despised them, they hated on them. They said, what is this thing you guys are trying to do? You can't do this. You're also rebelling against the king. You cannot get this work done. Uh, verse 20. So I answered them. I need somebody to put your hand up and say, answer. Yes. And I said to them, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. And that's what I want you to know this morning, that I'm, I'm, I'm ready for a move of God. And some of you will put your hands to this work, and some of you probably will wait until the work is done and say, look what we've done. <laughs> that's all right. But as long as God prospers me, I'm in a good position. You're in a good position. Therefore, his servants will rise and build, but they have no inheritance and right in this moral memorial in Jerusalem. He put Sam Ballin to buy them to the sides. You guys are not even going to be a part of what we're going to do. And back in Nehemiah, there in that second, in that third chapter, we come to the guy named Elishab. Elishab is the high priest. He rises up. His name means God will restore. He said it, it, it makes a good thing when, when you have priests or leaders stand up. When vision is going forward and things that God is trying to do in the church, when the leaders get behind it and begin to chat it through the church, we're doing this now. God's getting to do this. This is, what's, this is what the talk is. Cut that negative rah-rah. Let's talk about some good stuff God's getting ready to do. So he begins to lead out and the leaders get involved and he asks his other brothers to come along with him and say, let's do this thing together. Everyone there was willing to get their hands dusty and dirty in the work. It shows that Nehemiah was facing. They're ready to clean out the rubbish and bring in, clean out the residue and get ready to do, see the move of God take place. What do you see this morning? What things do you perceive that needs to be moved out of your life, moved out of spiritual gauge? What things have you known that this is not healthy in my life or even in the life of the church? Either it gets cleaned up or cleaned out, but something has to happen for us to get ready to build. You can't build on dirt. You have to build on a solid foundation. Ah, uh, yes. The priests and the leaders put their hands to the work. And the Nehemiah, the third chapter, I'm coming back to John. Don't worry about him. I got him. Nehemiah, the third chapter, verse one, they built first the sheep gate. They consecrated it and hung its doors. The overall effect here is displayed throughout the chapter of everyone, the third chapter, of everyone working together, everyone doing their several jobs. But the priests had to give a focus and attention to the sheep gate. Many people were there working, repairing everything, 
doing their job, laboring. Some are already laboring in this church, laboring in kingdom work. But the priest stepped up to start this thing off, that they opened up the sheep gate. No sense of building everything else, we don't have a sheep gate. You have to have a sheep gate. If not, we're just here having a country club. Thank you, Benton. Just a bunch of people gathering, but they're not recognizing the main entrance into all of this. As we labor and we co-labor together, we realize that God is not unrighteous to forget our labor of love. He underst we understand that all of us are laboring, doing something, 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, laboring, building. And God here is going to let us all come before the judgment seat one day and the books are going to be opened. Now watch this real close as I go through the judgment seat. The judgment seat here, according to Revelations 12, 20 and 12, talks about everyone appearing before God and giving account of the things done in your body. I grew up with the fear thinking that if I'm this jacked up now, how can I even appear before God? But the Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 8 that it's not by works that we are saved. But by grace alone are we saved. It is the gift of God. Not by works, but it is the gift of God. I don't work to be saved. I work because I am saved. And I labor more. I want to outwork all y'all. Because when I stand before the judgment seat, I'm not standing on this side to be put back out. Because I'm already raptured. According to Revelations 4, I'm already in heaven. But I'm calling before the judgment seat to be receive my gifts or my stars for the work that I've done in the kingdom. It pays to serve Jesus down here and up there. So when I come before the judgment seat, I'm getting my rewards. And after I get all my rewards, I'm going to go back and say, worthy and holy is the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. But these works that we have done and things that we do are for kingdom purpose. And somebody should rise up and say, well, let me put my work in. Let's take it to your house. How long before you lived in that house with mama and them and they finally told you, you're going to work around here, you're going to do something. Take the trash out, sweep a floor, mop a, a clean a window, mop a, a clean a toilet, mop a, do, you're going to do something. I don't feel like doing this. That's all right. So at 13, I'll stop you from doing anything. I have to do nothing else in my house. This is my house. I'm going to work in this house and make sure it's kept up. But soon you become 21, 22, and guess what? You got your own house. Now you realize nobody's going to take your trash out. It's not magical. Trash go out. No. You got to pick that trash up and take it out. Toilet, flush, clean. No, you got to get in there and clean that toilet and all the other gold that goes around it. You have to make sure. You have to make sure that things are kept up in your house. Amen? Look at somebody say, nobody going to clean your house but you. And even the housekeeper get tired of you sometimes. Like, I don't know, you just live just, anyway. So this is the house of the Lord, and we must keep the house of the Lord clean. Amen? Amen. So quit looking suspicious and wow, when you go in the bathroom and see water all over the counter, just pick up some paper towels and begin to just wipe the water off like it's your house. Amen. Another subject, another time. I got off, got off subject. So here we are laboring before the Lord and we're standing before the judgment seat for the things we've done according to our works that we have done. 1 Corinthians 3 and 8. For every man, 1 Corinthians 3 and 8. 1 Corinthians 3 and 8. 1 Corinthians 3 and 8. For every man shall receive his own reward according to the labor of his own labor. You see it in the text. So what you've done, you're going to be rewarded for it. Amen? How many believe you got something coming? I've done something in the church. Put your hands down. How many believe you know you ain't got nothing coming? You ain't done nothing since you got saved. You, ain't even, you won't even work with Calvary in the parking lot. You won't even pass out a fan. All you do is sit and spend. Oh, it's not something. Another time. Come on, come on. But those of you that have been laboring, reward is about to come. So we see in the context here that even in this third chapter of Nehemiah, verse 12, that Shalom, the leader, half the district of Jerusalem, Nehemiah, third chapter, verse 12, here this guy, Shalom, he's the leader of the half district of Jerusalem. His daughters got involved and got up to work. They got into, get involved and got to work in repairing the house of the Lord, are doing the things they need to do. Ladies, we need you. Ladies! We need you. And there's work you can do. It's not just a man thing. It's a kingdom thing. Because if we do it just, if it was just a man thing, I don't know what kind of madness we'll be having over here. But thank God the women got involved. The daughters got involved. And this was not usual during the time of Jerusalem. Most of the time, the women would have to do other things, and the men did the laboring work. But there are some women that can do some laboring work. I know some women that are stronger than men. Just can't lift hardly anything. Don't worry, I'm getting back to my subject. I'm ready for another move of God. The work went on. And they begin to build in the verse 32 of Nehemiah 3. We come back to the sheep gate. 
the goldsmiths and the merchants did their work, making sure the gate was put together properly. They laid it and prepared it. The sheep gate then is the first gate. It goes around and comes back to the sheep gate. It's very significant to see the sheep gate because it is here that animals were led through to go to the altar. It's here that we see the witness set forth of Jesus Christ. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. What would it good, I tell you again, to have a big, beautiful church, but there's no blood. And there's no reverence of he who entered into the sheep gate first. All that he says that come behind me, says it came up over me, was thieves and robbers. But all that come behind me enter in at the gate. You couldn't get in the church unless you came past Jesus. So don't sit there and act like you came in on your own self. It's because, because of God's grace you're sitting up in here. I want to talk to some sheep gate people this morning that say I'm ready for another move of God. If I stop thinking and forget fullness and don't remember where I was before I came to where I am, I'll think I'm all that. But the only reason I made it this for is by the grace of God. Every healing, every emotional stability, every ounce of peace, every bit of joy that you think I have, all the other stuff that's going to burn up, that God still gave me that. The reason I sit here today, or stand here today, because he brought me in the right way. If you start right, you'll live right, you'll walk right, even if you get off course, you'll come back right. It is at the sheep gate. It is here that the blood removes sins. The gate represents Jesus Christ, who is the leader of the lamb. He's the lamb that was slaughtered and slain before the foundation of the world. It is he, Jesus, who bore our sins on the cross. And it is he that made us spotless before God. It is he that covers us in all of our uncoveredness. The lesson here of the sheep gate is the workings of Christ. It is a starting point of restoration. It is the cross of Christ that works by the power of God's son, Jesus. It is the completion that we need that brings us even to a grounding in Jesus Christ. He guards us and protects us because he is the sheep gate entry. How, 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 how so often is it said that I am the door in John 10 and 9? He says, if you come in by me, you shall enter in and go out and find good pasture. But you got to come in by me. Nehemiah is trying to show us in the context or what John's going to tell us in a few minutes. It's about Jesus. If you're in here this morning, it's about Jesus. Everything you have, it's about Jesus. And the more you think about him and how much it is about him, it changes your perspective of who you really think you are. It's without him. Without him, you can do nothing. But I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So if I got any strength to move anything and have any breath to breathe, and be alive, then everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord. Everything about you ought to be praising the Lord. Now, 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 praise is easy because it's just clap, 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 clap. But worship takes a whole lot more energy. It has to realize that you're nothing and he's everything. The lower you go, the higher he goes. But the lower you go, the higher he'll lift you. Everybody can praise him, but everybody can't worship him. Why? Because they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The way you can check your spirit to see what comes out of your mouth and how worthy God is in spite of who you are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's at the sheep gate. Sheep gate, sheep gate. The priest is setting up the sheep gate. It is the leaders that are bringing about the sheep gate. We're bringing the sacrifice of worship to be made unto Jesus Christ. We hold him high, holy, worthy is the lamb. We honor him above everybody else. We stand and look back at how our entry happened, and we make sure we never forget how we came this way. It was only by the grace and mercy of God. Now we see John, the fifth chapter, one and two. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. This is another story prior, but I'm not going to go back in that fourth chapter and grab that now. But now he comes to the feast of the Jews. It's in John 5, 1 and 2. Jesus now walks in Jerusalem. He comes to the place that Nehemiah and were building. Now they're here. This gate is significant and it keeps going on. Now there in Jerusalem was a place called the Sheep Gate. That's in the NIV translation. A pool with called in the Hebrew Bethesda, where it had five porches around it. Bethesda in the Hebrew is a place called place of outpouring. 
something happens, happens in a place of outpouring. And also, it's a place of a house of grace. We're at the Sheep Gate at a place called Bethesda, five porches, porches. You'd be surprised how many porches are in this church. Porches are areas where people gather, and they gather around people of like presence on their porch. Who's on your porch? I wonder what porch you've gathered around you. Don't worry, it'll get happy in a minute. But everybody gets into a certain group, and that's the group you stick in. It's okay, I guess, but as long as you got Jesus in the group, don't leave him out of it. These people that are laying there, they're blind, they're halt. Some of them are paralyzed. Some of them are weak. They're waiting for the moving of the water. Is there going to be another move of God? Waiting for the stirring of something to take place. Sitting with anticipation, looking, wondering, how can we get into this water? Is God going to move again? The angel would go down and stir the water and make sure that there was a move happening, but the first one that got in was the one that was healed. This man was broke for 38 years, body having no power or strength, and he's saying, sitting, sitting there, laying there, I'm sorry, and he wanted to get in, but couldn't get in. He was near the sheep gate, but couldn't get in. But the owner of the sheep gate finally came and says, do you want to be made whole? I'm not worried about the pool you're sitting by or the porch you're on. I want to know, do you want to see another move of God? You're sitting there wondering, I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to happen because you want it to happen. Not because I'm making it happen, but if you want to move, you make another move of God a move for you just like because it takes you to make a move for God to make a move. Jesus, I didn't ask you about your condition or how long you've been here. I just want to know this morning, do you want to see a move of God? Are you really ready for after 38 years to pick up your bed and walk? It's up to you to get out of that stupor and lazy place and say, yeah, Lord, I want to move like I've never moved before. I want to see your power in the sanctuary. Can you keep saying that I can't move because of these porches. I can move a revival no matter where you're at. I can break out a revival, but it takes someone to say, I want another move of God. If you gather together, you will see that movement takes place. They're lying, these people, ready in their condition, wanting to see a move, but this only man had it in himself to say, I gotta get up from here. I believe there is a person in here this morning that made up in your mind, I will not go back home the way I came in this church. I don't know how to do all this stuff. I don't know all the church antics and move, but my joy is coming back. My peace is coming back. I will get up out of this place of depression and walk out of here in power. Sit if you want to. Sit if you want to. Sit if you want to. But I'm about to raise up out of here because I'm waiting for another move of God. The Bible said even though it was the Sabbath, he said, man, take up your bed and walk. It's been long enough lying in this condition. If you really want to move, then move on your feet first. The man said, what are you talking about? Take up my bed. I've been here for 38 years. I want to show you the faith that you really have. What's really inside of you, you can step over whatever the devil been trying to hold you down to, but you got to make up in your mind, I'm not going to let nobody stop me from getting what's mine. I want a move of God. I want some sheep gate people to say, Lord, I thank you for walking me through one more time. I thank you for bringing me out one more time. I thank you for bringing me through one more time. Tell your neighbor for the only time, this is my morning. This is my day for a move of Your hands up, Father. I bless you. I thank you for stirring on the inside, moving by your Holy Spirit. What a wonderful experience! That even paralyzed conditions can get up can take up and walk. Thank you for this gate. If 
if you brought me in, then you're able to keep me all the way through. I bless you for your grace on my life and strength to endure. None like you. Searched all over. Nobody greater than you. For allow me into this beautiful family. Now I'm ready for another move of God. Celebrate the Lord in the house. Encourage some type body and tell them it's gonna happen. You watch. It's gonna happen. You have been lying. You have been on pause. You have been in a place of stagnation long enough. Can I ask you one more time so I can check my message? How many ready for another move of God? That first revival is when he saved you. Boom. Oh, the joy. But after a while, as you keep walking, something begins to happen. And I see you and I pray for you. Because you, you come to church, sit down, sit down for a moment, sit down for a moment. You, you come to church and, and this is how you look. And I'm, I'm telling myself, oh, they're happy, they're happy, oh, they're happy. <laughs> Only until somebody say, hey, huh? Then you wake up. But I know. And I'm not throwing up just to make a statement. I'm going to stop because I'm, I'm tired. Um, some of you paid money to get in the club. And before you came to the door. <sighs> ain't in, in line outside. <sighs> I'm, 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 come on. Now, I don't know everybody didn't go to the club, but some of you did outside. <gasps> and when you got in, oh, you turn. If I'm talking about you, just be honest, say that's me. I, I paid to get in, stood in line. But when I got inside, oh, please, for the next three hours, y'all gonna hear me. Oh, oh. You see where I'm going? You got out your bed, you got dressed, you drove across town, you walked in the door, and David says, oh, I was glad when they said unto me, let me go back into the house. The devil did everything he could to keep me out the church. I need somebody to holler, I made it back. And I'm gonna let everybody know. I feel some power. I feel some power about to break loose in this church. Bump fist somebody say, shout about it then. Tell the world about it. Make your neighbor uncomfortable. Let them know I still got a job. I still got a car. I still got a house. And I still got the Holy Ghost. I still got power to tread up and walk upon. Hallelujah. I'm wanting the move of God. Move till my family gets saved. Move till mama gets saved. Move till my babies get saved. Move till depression shakes off. Move till I get healed. Move God till every yoke is broken. Move, 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 move. Move God. Move, move, move God. Move, I'm ready. God, I'm ready. God, I'm ready. God, I'm ready. Chain. Hallelujah. 
be seated. No more stagnation. The vision shall come to pass. He will do it suddenly, immediately, straightway. I prophesy straightway. I prophesy immediately. I prophesy now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Oh God, somebody catching that word. Somebody catching that word. Somebody is catching that word. Hallelujah. Reach up and say, my joy is coming back. My money is coming back. My career is coming back. Everything the devil took, I'm taking it all back. I know. 